Today we are making a crochet B, and your measurements can vary depending on hook size, yarn weight, and tension. But mine turned out to be about 6 centimeters or 2.5 inches for the diameter, or 9 centimeters and 3.5 inches long. And I will be using a 5 millimeter hook, a yarn needle, and some scrap blue, white, and black medium weight yarn. We're going to start off with the main color of our B. The first step is to make a magic circle. To do a magic circle, we're going to hold our yarn with the tail end at the bottom of our hand. And then we're going to grab the working end at the top and wrap it around two fingers to form an X. And then we're going to use our hook to go under and over and pull that yarn through. And we're going to grab hold of this part here, remove our fingers, and hold everything loosely, so make sure not to tighten or you'll get a slip knot. Now we're going to chain one. To chain, yarn over and pull through. And we're going to do six yarn under single crochets into the circle. You can do the regular yarn over single crochets, but I prefer the look of the yarn under. And to do a single crochet, insert your hook into the center of the circle, yarn under, pull through, then yarn under and pull through the two loops on your hook. Again, we're going to insert our hook into the center of the circle, yarn under, pull through, yarn under, pull through two loops. And here we have two, so we're just going to do four more until we have a total of six. And once we've done six single crochets and we can count them by these little V's above them, we can grab our tail end and pull on it to close up the hole. And now we're going to slip stitch into our very first single crochet. So with our hook, we're going to go under those two loops that form the V of the very first stitch of this round. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on our hook. And then we're going to pull on our yarn and tighten this so that the seam is smaller and less visible. Each round will end with a slip stitch and start with a chain one. So again to chain, just yarn over and pull through. To start off round two, we're going to do a single crochet into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into. So go under those same two loops that form the V and complete your single crochet. Once we're done with the first single crochet, we're going to go back into that same stitch and do another single crochet into that same space. This is called an increase, just two single crochets into the same stitch. Once we're done with the two into the very first stitch, we're going to move onto the second stitch, go under both loops that form the V, do our first single crochet, and then go back in and do our second single crochet. So now we've done increases into the first stitch and the second stitch. We're going to continue this and do an increase into every single stitch of this round. Once we're done, we should have 12 stitches. Now we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. So go under those two loops again, yarn over, pull through and pull through the loop on your hook and then we're going to chain one to start the next round for round three we're increasing every second stitch for the first stitch we're going to do just one single crochet so remember to go into that same stitch that we just slip stitched into and then we're going to move on to the next stitch so we're going to do our first single crochet into the second stitch and then we're going to go back into the second stitch and do another single crochet and now this pattern starts over we're going to do just one single crochet into the next stitch and then the stitch after that we're going to do an increase once we're done with round three, we should have a total of 18 stitches. And now we can slip stitch and chain one. For round four, we're going to increase in every third stitch. This means for our first two stitches, we're just going to do one single crochet into each of them. Once we reach our third stitch, 
we're going to do an increase. So two single crochets into the third stitch. And then we'll repeat this pattern with just one single crochet into each of the next two stitches and then an increase or two single crochets into the third one. The end of this round should have 24 stitches and then we'll slip stitch, chain one and start round five. Round five, we're going to increase in every fourth stitch. So for the next three stitches, we're going to do one single crochet into each of them. And then in the fourth stitch, we're going to do an increase. And then we'll repeat this pattern all the way around. And at the end of the round, we should have a total of 30 stitches. We're going to slip stitch, chain one, and round six has no increases. You can change the size of your bee by changing where you stop increasing. So if you want a bigger bee, then for the sixth round, increase every fifth stitch, seventh round, increase every sixth, and then every seventh, every eighth, and continue on until you get the size that you want. And if you want a smaller one, then just stop increasing earlier than I did. So round six. We are going to just do one single crochet into every single stitch. When we stop increasing, our circle is going to stop growing outwards and instead it's going to start to curl. So now we're working on the body of the bee. Now we're just going to continue making rounds of no increases until we reach where we want our stripes to be. I chose to do three rounds. And if you want, you can add more or less rounds. So after I've done my five rounds of increasing, I have three where I just built up my blue. Now I'm going to switch to my white color. So after we've slip stitched our last round, we're going to start the next round with white. And to attach our next color, we're going to chain with the white. So instead of chaining and pulling through with the blue, we're going to use the white instead. And make sure to not pull the white all the way through. You still need a tiny little bit of the tail end to tie to our blue yarn so it doesn't come loose. And I am going to double knot it to keep it really secure. So now we're just going to drop the blue yarn and work with the white yarn. And since we already chained one when we pulled the white yarn through, we're just going to start single crocheting into the first stitch. And we're going to have two stripes. You can add more if you want. And I am going to be making them two rounds each with no increases. If you want a thicker stripe, then just add more rounds. And once we're done with the two rounds in the white, we're going to switch to our blue using the same method. So after our second round and we slip stitch, we're going to chain one, pulling the blue yarn through. And then I'm going to do two more rounds in blue. And then after my two rounds in blue, I'm going to switch back to my white and do two more rounds in white. And after my two more rounds in white, I'm going to slip stitch and cut off my yarn. And then before I attach my blue yarn again, I'm going to tie the white end with the rest of my blue yarn. And this will secure it. We're going to pause here and attach the wings and the face. You can choose to attach them whenever you want, but I found that it's the easiest at this point. To make the wings, we're going to need another magic circle. So again, hold the yarn with the tail end at the bottom of your hand and wrap the top around two fingers to form an X. Use your hook to go under and over and pull it through. Grab hold of the top of the ring and remove your fingers and chain one. And again, we're just going to do six single crochets like we did for the B. And then we're going to slip stitch, chain one, and for round two, we're going to do increases in every single stitch. And for round three, we're not going to do any increases, and this will cause the wing to curl in. 
Once we're done with all three rounds, we can slip stitch, chain one to make a knot, and cut off our yarn and pull through with our hook. Now just make one more and we can start attaching them. And I prefer to attach the wings on first because it's a lot easier to fix the face if it's off center. And I like to attach the wings in between the stripes with the slip stitches facing down. First we'll grab the wing with the longest loose end and it really doesn't need to be that long. And since mine is at the middle of the wing, we're going to move it down to the edge of the wing. And then we're going to place our yarn needle behind one of our single crochets between the stripes. And then I'll grab my other wing and go through one of the stitches on the edge. And notice how I'm only going through the outer loop instead of under both. This allows the wings to sort of relax and separate instead of just sticking straight up. And then we'll go over onto that same wing and go through one of its loops and behind the single crochet that's directly under the one we went behind earlier. And then we'll go through the next loop on our first wing. And finally, we'll go into the next loop over on our first wing, go behind the single crochet directly under our two single crochets from earlier, and then through the next loop over on our second wing. And once we pull it through, it'll tighten and pull the wings into place. And I'm going to use my hook to go through the bee from the inside and pull the rest of the yarn into the bee. And I'm going to do the same for those two other loose ends that we have. And with our second wing, since we didn't move the tail end from the center of the wing, we're going to use our yarn needle to pull it to the edge of the wing and through to the inside of the bee. Now we should have four white tail ends on the inside of the bee and to secure them, we're going to tie them into a knot. So I'm just going to grab two into either hand, it doesn't matter which ones, and I'm just going to double knot them together. And since they're on the inside of the bee, we don't have to worry about weaving these in because no one will see them. Now we're going to add the face and if you'd like, you can use pins or stitch markers to mark where you want the eyes and mouth to be. I'm just going to go directly in the middle of the wings and follow the line down the middle to the outside of our first round. And I'll just use my hook to pull in the black yarn to the inside. And then to secure this black piece of yarn, we're going to tie it to our tail end when we first started this bee. This not only secures the face, but also the magic ring. And now I'm just going to make a little V for the mouth. I'm going to go over to the left side on the outer ring that is the first round. And I'm going to push my yarn needle through to the other side, making sure that it is perfectly horizontal. And then I'll pull my yarn through. And then go back through into that same space that we started. And following the line of the mouth, I'm going to poke my yarn needle through to the outside of the second round. And I'm going to make upside down V's for the eyes. And following the line of the mouth again, I'm going to go diagonally to the left, but on the outside of the third round. And before I pull through, I'm going to go diagonally at the same slant along the outside of the third row. And then I'm going to go back into the top of that upside down V. And trying to be perfectly horizontal, I'm going to go the top of the eye on the right.
and then I'll do the same for this eye. And once we're done, we can just pull it into the inside of the bee and tie a knot. And to make a knot, I'm going to go under a stitch, wrap my yarn around it a couple of times, and then pull my needle through. And now we can finish closing up the bee. So after our second white stripe, we're going to do just two rounds in blue with no increases. And now we're done with the body and we can start decreasing to finish the back end of the bee. So this is round 17 and we're going to decrease every fourth stitch. So first we're going to do one single crochet into each of the first three stitches. And then we're going to do a decrease. And to do a decrease, insert your hook into the fourth stitch of the round, yarn under, pull through, insert your hook into the fifth stitch, yarn under, pull through, and then yarn under and pull through all three loops on the hook. So this is a decrease, it just makes two stitches into one. And it's also called a single crochet two together. And then for the next three stitches again, we're going to do one single crochet into each of them. And then on the fourth one, we're going to do a decrease. So again, after your three single crochets, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn under, pull through, insert your hook into the next stitch after that, yarn under, pull through, then yarn under, and pull through all three loops. And just like with the increases, we're going to be doing these decreases in the same pattern all the way around. And if your stitch count is correct, you should end with a decrease in your last two stitches. And you should have a total of 24 stitches in this round. For round 18, we're going to do a decrease every third stitch. So after one single crochet into each of the next two stitches, we're going to do a decrease. At the end of this round, you should have 18 stitches. In round 19, we're going to do a decrease every second stitch. And at the end, you should have 12 stitches. And we're going to pause here and fill the bee with polyfill. Once it's full, we can continue on with our last round. And for round 20, we're going to do a decrease in every single stitch. So after you've decreased in every single stitch, there should be only six stitches left. And once we're done with this round, we can fasten off by chaining one and cutting a strand just a few inches so we can sew this hole closed and use our hook to pull through. And then we're going to grab our yarn needle and we're going to sew this hole closed by just weaving our yarn in and out of the outer loops of our last six stitches. And once we're done, we can pull it tight to close up the hole and then tie a knot. And then we're just going to use our hook to go through the side of the bee and over to the back end where we can use our hook to pull the loose end to the inside of the bee. And this is how your bee should look. And that's the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please leave a like if you did and subscribe if you're new. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.